Yeah. So um, shall we come to order at 6.30 for the um, annual information meeting? And I'll turn it over to you, Floor. Thank you, Scott. Uh, welcome, everybody. I, I see that we have just two community member <laughs> members, but uh, should we give another minute, uh, Scott, to run the slideshow, or do you want to get started right away? Um, it's entirely as you wish, Floor. Um, the the slideshow is something. Um, it's like three minutes. Which it three was minutes. So yeah, um, we can we can sort of um, socialize for a couple of minutes if um, if you like. Yeah. Um, here maybe oh here I see more I see more people coming in I see Edie Edie is that Edie Miller who's Edie? It is yeah. Edie Miller. Hello Edie. How are um, you all? Very good. It's nice to see you. Nice. A lot of you. familiar um, faces. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Um, Jill, um, Jill Olson, um, since you have to leave, is there anything, is there any message that you would like to make sure that you convey to the, um, to the rest of us? Um, no, I hope everybody's voted by now, but if they haven't, I hope they'll vote for our budget. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Mars, your last chance. <laughs> That's right. Well, the last minute news certainly uh, made that more likely. <laughs> yeah. We're very fortunate. Okay, I guess let's get started. In, uh, okay. In, hi, Mary. <laughs> And it, Jim, it, so what I thought is that we would start with the slideshow and give you a little window into our schools. And it's self-explanatory. I hope you enjoy the slideshow and thank you to all the administrators that helped me put it together too. And thank you, Jim, for the technical support too today in my craziness. Thank you.
Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So, thank you so much. That I was hope you all enjoyed it. <laughs> I couldn't hear you, Mary. <laughs> that was beautiful. You did a great job. Jonas. Jonas. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to make sure that we are also recognizing the incredible teachers and administrators and the incredible students who have also made the remote school possible. We've been operating seven schools this year, um, and I want to make sure that those people get called out and the kids that have uh, learned so hard uh, and, you know, had the experience they have through this get their recognition as well. Um, we should maybe have a slideshow or show a school. A slideshow? <laughs> that would be pretty interesting too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for, you know, thanks again for all the help in getting all your story. And it, it's hard to not get a little emotional watching all the kids since we haven't been able to set foot in our schools that much this year. But it's so nice to, to share that window with all of you. So uh, welcome to our community uh, budget forum, well, town meeting, let's say. Uh, we would like to thank our amazing Washington Central District team. Uh, thank you for continuing to be the heart of our communities. Um, we are really grateful for you. We know it's not easy, but your efforts do not go unnoticed. This pandemic has brought into focus public attention to children and education. The inequities in our society are now in every community member's mind, food insecurity, limited mental health access, healthcare, homelessness, broadband, income inequality, etc. As a state and a country, we need to continue to prioritize community and common good. A strong public education is the basis of our democracy and the key to equitable and flourishing communities. With that in mind, we can get started with the budget presentation. So Jim, would you mind putting it up? Yes, let me, let me go ahead and, uh, and pull that up one second. Thank you. And I guess I can continue my chat while that comes up. So the school board makes decisions on behalf of the entire community, as you all know, that support the education needs of each student. Engaging our communities in that conversation helps us make sure that the community voice is at the heart of our decisions. And it also helps us ensure that we're not only working towards equity, mm -hmm in our schools, but also in our communities as a whole. We all want healthy communities and families, ensuring that each and every child has what they need to thrive and succeed sets the foundation for long-term outcomes, not only for the child, but also for our communities. I'm gonna wait a minute because I'll get into the other stuff. <laughs> Hold on, I'm getting your chopstick. Jim? Sorry. Okay, let's I'm just pulling it up right now. We're having one small technical difficulty. I'll be there in one second here. Okay, no, no worries. Well, good budgets don't happen by accident. Planning and collaboration are key components of drafting a budget that is also grounded and driven by data. This budget meets the needs of all students reserves programs that meet the needs uh, that meets the needs right sizes schools personnel through early retirement um, and minimal staff reductions and reduces some expenses and supplies uh, also i'm just gonna wait a minute <laughs> sorry okay here we go so let's move to the next slide uh, so, okay right there so equity uh, for budget purposes today, equity is a school culture that supports educators in practicing effective and responsive instruction that meets the needs of the whole child. For example, everyone is getting what they need to thrive and to master our student outcomes. So here's a list of our student outcomes. I'm not gonna read each one of them, but here they are. Student learning outcomes are statements that specify what students will know, be able to do, or be able to demonstrate when they have completed or participated in a program, activity, course, or project. 
uh, outcomes are usually expressed as knowledge, skills, attitudes, or values, and they are in alignment with the Vermont Education Quality Standards. The leadership team has continued to work on our proficiency-based learning system with specific outcomes and assessments that are consistent across our schools. We still have work to do, but at the, but the end result is a system that flows from pre-K through graduation. It, on the right column, you see the transferable skills, and those are at the heart of what we do. Next slide, Jim, please. So as a board, we have the responsibility to lead and to make sure that we remove barriers and provide the resources needed. Last summer, we set three goals as a board, improving student achievement, building board governance, and community engagement. These goals help us stay focused on student learning and on collaboration and on monitoring results. So here we have a lot to be proud of. We are one of five districts in Vermont to reopen fully for live in-person instruction from grades pre-K to A. We created a more robust and community-centered remote learning offering for all our students, working to align our instructional approaches for teaching, math, and literacy. We provided all students with increased access to technology it, we continue to work to develop our own personal care assistance and behavior interventionists. It, school board, the school board is committed to the strategic planning process for the continuous improvement and the creation of assessments to plan and track student academic process. And just as two weeks ago, we received news that we got uh, the grants uh, for the COVID relief for the CARES Act in the amount of $4.3 million. And, and that is in due a lot to that we were one of the districts that were fully open uh, when the school year started. Uh, next slide, Jim, please. And I'm going to pass this to Scott and with one final uh, thought. Uh, but I, I guess I'll save that one to the end. Go ahead, Scott, and we'll move. Thank you, Flora. Um, this slide is <clears throat> basically just to show that even though the budget product looks like a very um, technical and um, mathematically arrived at um, entity. It's actually very human, highly political effort. Um, and effort should be underscored because it is not easy to balance, to accommodate, to work with, and um, with all of the various constraints um, in order to meet all of the various aims that we have for our schools. Um, nonetheless, we think that with this budget that we're presenting, we've, um, we've done about as well as, as we possibly could. Um, next slide, please, Jim. May I ask a question? Do you want questions while you're doing the presentation or wait till the end? I, I would be, I am, I'm, uh, please ask away. I, uh, um, in the midst one, of things. Okay, one of the previous slides mentioned that you got a lot of money from the federal government. I'm wondering how that is going to impact our budgets, obviously that was responsible for a lot of the decrease, I would think. And um, I wonder how that uh, will affect future years uh, budgets as, as we go forward and maybe have to continue with some of the new things that are being done. Right, um, that's a great question. And uh, for, for the maximum credibility, we'll probably have uh, the administration answer it. But I think the short answer is that none of the federal money that we got for um, to help us through COVID is built into our budget base. Um, we're, um, there will be no cliff as a result of that, of that money, um, which is part of what is, um, has been, uh, I think, so advantageous about it. Uh, Lori and Brian and um, all of those who have been working in getting these uh, in getting this federal money um, for essentially for uh, to to meet the pandemic specifically 
have, um, I think, done an excellent job at, at first at finding the money, figuring out where it is, which is not an, an easy thing to begin with, um, writing the grants <clears throat> um, and, and, and then processing the, the funds so that we, we observe the um, heavy regulation that, that is associated with spending federal money and, um, and coming out of it, you know, um, with the maximum benefit for our school district and our schools and our students with the minimum of potential um, difficulty thereafter. Uh, it's really been a pretty exemplary effort. Um, but I would turn it over to Brian and Lori, um, as as you wish, if you want to uh, say anything more about that. Well, as as the superintendent, I don't think I can say much more, Scott. I think you covered most of it, if not all of it. Uh, the uh, four point three million dollars in grants was uh, really just uh, reimbursing us for expenses that were incurred to reopen the schools. Uh, there are a lot of uh, projects that we had to do, uh, some such as uh, air ventilation projects. Uh, purchasing PPE, making sure we had uh, isolation rooms built in the school. Brian, Zadie muted you. <laughs> my daughter just muted me. Oh my, and we're recording this. Come on, so, come on. So, come on, so, so, <laughs> she, she just gave me the look too. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, ultimately uh, a lot of that, a lot of, it's very, it was very expensive to uh, uh, reopen the schools. And I think that the, federal government and through the state government uh, found ways to support those districts out there that had the uh, courage to reopen the schools. And, but, and of course we implemented it following the CDC guidelines uh, to make sure everyone was safe as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, we didn't just reopen the schools thinking we were gonna get the reimbursement. We reopened the schools thinking this is the best thing we could do for our children. Uh, there was uh, uh, funds we were told that may be available and we're happy that they are made available to our district for that. But the uh, budget that you're seeing here tonight that uh, uh, the board is presenting is different than the grant money that we received. Uh, the grant money received was kind of like one uh, one time expenses uh, we're hoping uh, to keep us, uh, uh, hopefully we don't have any other pandemics any, in the near future, uh, but uh, this, these are mostly one time uh, expenses. Lori, did I miss anything? The only thing is, is everything had to be spent by December 30. So the funds were available for spending between last March and this past December 30. So again, just to reiterate, it is not for next fiscal year, but thank you for asking. Thank you for answering. Great, and any other questions that you might have Edie or anyone else <clears throat> in the audience, please feel free to, to pipe up. Thank you. Um, so um, in terms of the, uh, of the budget development. This is essentially the flow, flow chart, which once again makes it look very neat and clean. Um, as I think Kari will, um, will be uh, addressing shortly, this repeat as necessary happened a number of times and with a number of um, uh, different ideas about what the context would be in which we would have to draw up this budget. And um, again, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the, the details to, to Kari, but um, this essentially, the, the original budgeting is, is done within the administration. And then it's presented to the finance committee of which Floor is the chair. And from the finance committee to the, to the board as a whole, and we send it back. Um, we invite community participation, public participation um, early on in the budget process. Uh, and we try to keep the public and have kept the public informed. Um, those members of the public who are interested in being informed um, along the way as we have uh, gotten to this point. So <clears throat> we can go to the next one, please. And this is enrollment trends. This is the uh, sort of the big story and has been for um, a generation basically in Vermont, the decline in student enrollment 
um, as you can see, the student enrollment curve is, um, shows a steeper decline than the decline in equalized pupils, although that too is declining, um, just not as, uh, as quite as dramatically, which is a good thing because the equalized pupil count is what um, figures in the tax formula. So uh, a slower decline in equalized pupils means a, a slower rise in that, um, in the, in that, in the value of, of uh, education spending over equalized pupils in the tax formula. So if there are no questions, we can continue. Right, and um, these are these are some of the um, of the highlights. Although um, the first one is a little bit downbeat, the um, the declining enrollment. But um, on the plus side of the ledger, uh, I, I think we have the ingredients to do some um, some really great things, um, even with the pandemic in full swing, as Brian pointed out earlier, as Flora pointed out at the beginning, we have been open pre-K to eight and um, on a rotating week by week basis for the high school students to preserve social distancing. Um, but we've still, uh, we've had a curriculum audit. We're getting ready to, um, to enter into another um, cycle of strategic planning. Um, we have terrific administration, um, very talented core of, of employees. And not least important is, um, is a really lively and vigorous student body um, who are very active, very, who uh, challenge us, not only us on the board, but their, um, their elders in the schools and um, keep all of us on our toes. And with that, um, they're a big part of why we can, um, we can actually deliver the best and, and the most um, forward thinking educational opportunities we can. So I think, I think that's my bit. I'll pass it back to you, Floor, um, to pass on to Kari maybe. Sure. Thanks, Scott. Uh, there were two, uh, three things that I forgot to mention before I pass it on to Carrie. And uh, uh, Scott was just alluding to it: is that the board uh, gives the parameters to the to the um, to the administrators or the superintendent when we start the budgeting process. And this year, uh, you know, some of you have heard this before, but this year we established the parameters that we gave them uh, when they got started it was to establish a budget that is less than 3% net impact in taxes, which as you know, was better than we ever thought, uh, to find ways to pay for three initiatives that are included in this budget, uh, the strategic planning process, the facility director and health instruction uh, for all our schools, and to establish a budget that was less than the excess spending threshold uh, per equalized pupil. And lastly, to establish a budget that will move towards supporting a strong multi-tier system of supports in all our schools. So now to you, Carrie. Thanks, Laura. So hi, everybody at Carrie uh, Palace. And my role tonight is to talk about some of the specifics of how we're planning to spend the money next year. Uh, this first chart shows the overall size of the district expense budget last year on the far left, and then the four versions this year. We uh, presented the version 1A back in December. That was a level service budget. And that was no changes other than normal inflationary increases. And since then, you can see that we've reduced the budget um, by over $600,000 net. And we're actually calling for less spending in the 2021-22 budget than in the current year. And um, of course, I have to point out that our expense budget is only one of the of several factors that will deter, actually determine next year's tax rate, and we'll talk about some of those other factors in a moment. So, uh, next slide, please. 
Our next slide is going to show two pie charts. It's, it's the breakdown of expenses by major categories for the current year on the left and uh, next year's recommended budget on the right. Uh, the big takeaway here is that personnel expense, which is the wages and salaries and benefits that we pay our um, uh, teachers, support staff, and administrators, that's the lion's share of our budget. It's about 70%. Otherwise, we're looking at relatively minor changes in the uh, relative, relative proportions of the different categories. One of the key drivers in this year's budget, once again, is medical insurance. Uh, we're having to uh, take on a 9.5% increase, which means that that portion of our budget just gets a little bit uh, larger every year, it seems like. Next slide, please. This next slide is going to um, give you a closer look at next year's proposed budget, focusing on the items that most significantly impact the bottom line. These are the highlights, so the numbers here don't um, add up exactly. Also, um, these numbers are, uh, do not match what was in the voter's guide. We had to publish the best information that we had back in mid-January. And since then, uh, the state officials have reported that uh, revenue picture has improved quite a lot. And uh, next year's budget will actually be have a much more uh, favorable tax impact than we had thought um, back a month and a half ago. In fact, you see on the top line here, we're anticipating that our school, um, school budget will have a net impact of a 1% decrease over the current year. Uh, in the first section, uh, first big bullet, um, th uh, this covers the compensation items. And we've been able to offset the increases in medical insurance and salary rates in a variety of, variety of ways, um, including by reducing several positions. Um, need to point out that the parentheses in this section, um, th these are accounting symbols that uh, show negative or reductions in spending. Um, so much of the savings here is accomplished by offering uh, early retirement option uh, to our employees and then not backfilling the openings that were created. At the same time, we, we are um, including new positions within this budget. In particular, we've got special educators. And then as Floor mentioned earlier, health instruction in the elementary schools and a new uh, facilities director, which is designed to free up our principals and the superintendent uh, to focus more on education. The next section is non-compensation items. Um, here we're showing a 1.4% decrease in spending overall, but within this category, there are many changes, both negative and positive. Rest assured, we uh, have gone through each line, scrutinized everything and adjusted with an eye towards what's in our best interest overall and over the long term. And then in that last section, labeled revenues, I wanna highlight a couple important points um, we are drawing on our fund balance where it makes sense to. Uh, we've built up our reserves over time and we asked our administration, as we mentioned in the uh, parameter setting, to look at where we could use those, um, those uh, reserves appropriately, in particular for one-time fiscal, one-time expenses like early retirement. Um, so as uh, Scott pointed out, avoiding any kind of fiscal cliff and, uh, down the road. Um, you also see that there's, we're projecting a significant reduction in revenue from the tuition that we receive from students who come from other towns to attend our schools. Uh, you may know that for many years we have benefited from students, uh, mainly Washington, Orange, and Roxbury, sending students primarily to attend U32. And they have historically contributed quite a lot of, uh, to our revenue uh, for our system, but we're now seeing a decline in the number of those students who, and then um, the tuition that they're paying. And we're gonna have to closely monitor this trend um, as it's a, a significant factor that's adding pressure to our budget um, over time. All right, so that is my summary. I wanna thank uh, staff for all of their good work. Uh, this is uh, my seventh budget season um, and by far uh, started out as the most challenging circumstances um, I don't even know what number two would be, uh, wouldn't be very close. Um, but I, th I think this budget really reflects a, um, an outstanding effort to reduce spending without negatively impacting uh, education and services that we provide to our students. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris McVeigh to talk about how the budget uh, relates to taxes. Thanks. Edie has a question. Um, before, before we do, Kari, um, actually, Edie has her hand up. Yeah. 
Please, Edie. I wonder if this budget, uh, if you plan for any pandemic contingency, you know, if, if in fact, you can't go back to school full time as normal in the fall. Um, I don't, I don't believe so. I don't think there's any funding in there specifically, but I, before I misspeak, let me ask Brian or Lori to weigh in on that. Um, so Edie, the, um, legislature right now is considering, um, grants for next fiscal year. They're actually looking more at more schools going in person. So this budget reflects us going in person and should there need to be accommodations there's potential for the district to get another million dollar grant next year to help support that endeavor. Um, the details are getting worked out as we speak at the legislature. Does that answer your question, Edie? Yeah, I think so. And it sounds like uh, some of the uh, perhaps capital things you did this year would stand us in good stead in general and in case of other things in terms of air quality and things like that. Yes. Good, thank you. Um, so um, we're turning it over to Chris then at this point, correct? Yes. Very good. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for, for coming. And um, my name is Chris McVeigh from, from Middlesex. And we, as always, appreciate our community support um, of our schools and our budget. Our communities have been um, famous for supporting uh, the budgets that the board has uh, presented and we are very hopeful that the community will continue their, that winning streak uh, this year as well particularly given uh, the type of budget that we're presenting um, in extraordinarily trying uh, circumstances of this year um, i will echo my colleagues in, in uh, uh, commending the the staff uh, and our students um, and our administrators and community for supporting um, our school being open this year uh, and doing as well as we've done in maintaining a health, uh, a healthy environment for, uh, for everyone who goes to our schools. Um, so as you can see um, within it, with this slide, that there are several components um, to, uh, that make up the tax rate. Uh, we are very fortunate to be presenting this budget uh, at this time. Um, because we have, uh, if it was earlier, we'd be presenting some very negative news for the most part in regard to tax rates. Um, but because there are greater revenues than anticipated, uh, the tax rates, instead of being um, going up, um, are actually going down, um, as, as will be seen on the next page. But there are five basic components that go into determining what the tax rate is. Um, first, of course, is the school district expense budget, with Car which Kari uh, described for us uh, previously. The next is the number of equalized pupils in our schools. Um, and as, as Scott indicated, while those are declining, they have held steady. Um, and equalized pupils um, are part of the formula in, in determining what state aid comes to our district. Uh, the next is the property yield amount, which is set by the legislature and is uh, pretty much out of our control. Uh, the next is the state tax rate, also set by the legislature and largely out of our control. And the final factor is the common level of appraisal that each town has. And now that is a um, factor that is within each town's control. Um, and as you, you can see in the next slide, next slide, please, Jim. Um, the common level of appraisal um, varies um, from town to town. Uh, and the higher the common level of appraisal, uh, the better the impact on the tax rate for that town. Um, so this, this graph, um, shows um, what the um, expected decrease for each of the towns in our uh, school district will be uh, based on uh, the uh, tax rate formula, uh, which 
I cannot describe to you. I would have to turn it over to better minds than mine, like Scott Thompson's, um, it, to explain <laughs> what this tax rate means. But if I look at the bottom line, it's good news this year. Um, with that, I'm hopeful that everyone in our communities will support uh, this budget, which as, as has been described, has been very thoughtfully prepared uh, and debated uh, and is the budget that our administrators tell us will provide the resources um, so that we can serve our students and our staff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Uh, before we open it to questions and I pass it back to, uh, to, to Scott, let's say, uh, um, I have a couple of last minute uh, things. Uh, so we hope, uh, we hope that the financial forces that are probably coming to us uh, and the declining population in the next coming years won't decimate the education our kids receive, but transform it. We will continue to collaborate and continue to look for opportunities with the superintendent and the leadership team to improve the outcomes of our kids without compromising the experience. We will monitor programs, use findings from the upcoming curriculum review we still have work to do, but we're committed to continuing to work towards a greater equity in our schools and to be in an anti-racist school district. Our commitment to positive change will not just be in reaction to current events, but as part of the ongoing work in equity, social justice, and inclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Flora. And um, thanks to all the other presenters, Kari, Chris, um, <clears throat> and and Edie, thank you for your um, for your to keep things um, keep things on the way. Um, how about um, when I looked at the participant list, I saw um, a number of people who may actually be members of the of the public um, who are not actually associated with the with the school district in an official fashion here tonight and what i'd like to do is particularly invite you um, members of the public to uh, either to ask questions or to um, tell us um, how you see the, the district going, if you have any, um, have any questions or concerns or, or suggestions about it. Um, if you'll forgive me, um, uh, Edie, if I, if I may um, sort of go down the list, I see, I see Denise Roy. Um, Denise? Um, May I, if you're actually uh, able to to get to your screen, um, and are interested in, in saying something, would you be um, would you be up for that? And if not, that's fine too. We can proceed um, <clears throat> to um, Martha Martha Tucker. Is there anything that you have for us or um, would like to ask us? Hi, um, I'm interested to know um, about the staffing changes. Are you able to um, give details on that? Just what positions have been changed? Thanks. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a lot there um, I, I, I would defer to Brian for, to, to kind of sum it up. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Great question, Martha. I would say that uh, the there's a minimal impact to staffing changes with this uh, proposed budget. Uh, most of the uh, savings came at uh, attrition. So when uh, the uh, board uh, uh, thankfully did a, uh, a buyout last year, uh, and some folks were uh, retiring this year. So a lot of, most of the uh, reductions are being saved with, um, with allowing the minimal impact to major position changes. Now there always could be, and I as superintendent will reserve the right to position changes, whether or not in any budget, right? So uh, 
the uh, I think the uh, the big piece is is that right now we're looking at minimal uh, changes to positions at all b based on the foresight of the board from last year to um, offer the uh, retirement incentive uh, to teachers and, and uh, last year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks very much, Martha. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I see uh, Parker. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Park, uh, the the identification here on the screen. Yes, please go right ahead. Um, I, I came to listen, and uh, I thank you very much for the presentation. It's been very informative. Thank you. Um, and, and do you mind my? I, I didn't catch your name. Gary Parker. Gary Parker. And um, somewhere I've got a camera, but I can't find it. <laughs> not, not to worry. That's really okay. <laughs> thank you for thank you very much for joining us. Um, I don't know if Denise um, Denise Roy has uh, returned to or, or is um, interested in speaking. Um, I don't have any questions. I'm all set. Wonderful. Um, our thanks to you as well for joining us. And um, I guess I just want to make sure that Tiffany, are you here in your official capacity or are you here in your? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm here taking notes. Okay, wonderful. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so Edie, uh, I saw your hand. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I really don't want to take your time. I first want to congratulate you. Um, I think we are, you've done a fabulous job of keeping the schools open. The work that, that the, um, uh, the staff and the administration has done to make that happen this year, I think has, has been just terrific. Um, you know, a, a year into this, we're seeing the effects of kids who have not had, including my own grandchildren out of state, who have not had the opportunity to go to school for all this time. And I'm so grateful to, to, to you that oh, you all that you've been able to, to do this. And, um, and from what I hear just through the community, you know, it's, it, it was really tough last spring, but it's gotten everything, you know, everyone has, has pitched in to learn new things and to try new things. And, um, it's been a most successful effort. So I do congratulate you um, uh, and thank you for the hard work. I know this is hard work. And I do have one general question and that is, um, uh, Martha asked about uh, the, the staffing changes. Staffing changes have been really difficult. Now I remember the, the days when these student declines started in the late 80s and early 90s. And, um, you know, what was said then was uh, as we looked at students, the, those declines, and uh, it was very difficult to, to uh, move staff, change staff numbers because the declines are gradual. Now we're, you know, I don't know how many students we've lost since then, but now the, the, statewide, the, the numbers are huge. You know, you, we've lost what, 20 or 30% of our students over the last 25 years. I, I, I haven't looked at the numbers recently. So I guess I'm wondering, um, how are you all thinking about that for the nearer future? You know, seeing that they're still going down. Um, you know, I, I, I'm assuming from something you said, Scott, that perhaps you're you're going to be looking at the, at the tuition, you know, in terms of boosting them. But um, how, how, did, how are you thinking about that? Because it's, it's an ongoing, per perplexing situation. Perplexing indeed. And Edie, you asked the tough questions, um, but, but the, the good questions. Um, we're, we're, very, <clears throat> we're very aware hyper aware, I might even say of this, um, of this trend and the need for, 
yeah the need for us to um to basically um be able to shrink gracefully without um you know without traumatizing um communities staff students especially um and this is all part of uh, uh i think the kind of strategic approach that we're getting into this year um it's 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 you know very broad gauged it's not just you know a strategic plan for how we're going to continue um uh programming curriculum and and uh, instruction and assessment but also longer range uh budgeting options how we can um how we can adapt to uh to the um these longer term trends that are uh unlike the pandemic that are foreseeable i mean um i think all of us feel much more confidence um in our ability to do this after the um the gigantic effort put in by our administration and our our teachers in um in making our schools work during i think perhaps the, the greatest upheaval um as you were pointing out um the greatest upheaval in our in in our um in our in our lives i mean certainly in in my lifetime um it's an extraordinary achievement i think that you rightly um you know express gratitude for as as do we um but i think it it's it, it's a as background to uh an approach that we can take um where we can actually look ahead and and see what what might be happening and plan for it that is uh, i think what we're all sort of looking forward to sinking our teeth into and i i don't know if uh, any of my colleagues would like to weigh in on that dorothy i see um i'm I'm speaking to Edie and myself. You guys need to provide some nice, attractive senior housing so we can move out of our housing houses and make room for big families. So get with it, Edie. Wow, Dorothy. <laughs> That's great. Um, Flora. I think picking on what Dorsey was saying is just, I think we're, at least from my point of view, we're concentrating looking for opportunities, Edie, rather than, so looking at opportunities at how best to work together across our communities and, and continue to concentrate on student needs, what is what provides best opportunities to kids. So I think if we continue to do what we've been doing now, looking for best outcomes, best opportunity for kids, I think we would be able to navigate the the declining population and find opportunities and ways to collaborate. Well, thank you for all your efforts. Um, um, I do. I'm aware of the work it takes to do your work, and I uh, know that it's hard work and it's frustrating work. And thank you for doing it. You're very kind, Edie. Thank you for saying so. And um, and the the good thing is, um, our enrollment could go up. I mean, it's, we're not doomed to have permanently declining enrollment. Um, it's a function, perhaps not only of our moving into senior, <laughs> but um, but also other factors that may encourage young families to um, to have more children and to move to Vermont. Um, um I, does anybody else have anything to uh to share or to ask brian yeah, i just wanted to uh uh thank thank the board and i thank the leadership team and uh last but certainly not least uh this is Lori's uh last annual uh annual meeting meeting before the annual meeting so i just wanted to uh, give her a uh a proper shout out. Obviously, we'll be talking more about Lori at the as we we still have Lori for four more months at least. Uh, but I uh, just wanted to uh, thank her for her leadership 
uh, working with me uh, in my first year here in Washington Central. Thank you, Brian. A hundred percent agreement on that from all of us. Sorry, I, I still I still have trouble uh, just coping with of you not being there. But um, but thank you for um, for all of this. I mean, we wouldn't be where we are today had it not been for your incredible work. So um, as well as the rest of the team. But, but you're a key member of that team and we're exceptionally grateful. Um, <laughs> um, Floor, is there? <laughs> Was that an invitation? Peanut gallery. Um, it... <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, all we had. that's all we had for tonight. Just uh, a reminder for everybody to go vote. And we we don't our next meeting is March third, and uh, that's all we had for tonight. So wonderful <laughs> and and bye. just bye. But but a reminder to all of you who are um, who are on the ballot, board members on the ballot, um, please get sworn in before our Wednesday board meeting, our reorganization meeting. Personal plea. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day, great evening, great day tomorrow. Many thanks. Thank you, Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thank you, Brian.